Hey, this is Candia Raquel, founder of Centro de Poder, and you are at the Sensual Sessions podcast, the place to explore sensing pleasure through your senses and exploring yourself, expressing yourself and exploring yourself in a way that is completely free from inhibition. So today we have a very special guest. This is Karen Bosser from Germany. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. Welcome uh, for the invitation. I have to say thank you very much. <laughs> I'm very happy to have you here because I am like very mesmerized by one of your projects that is a film called Sense. And it touched me because you stand there like in the middle of the forest and then you You're in the city with, with a loose cotton blue shirt and you're dancing, but it's not the dance that we think of like ballet or contemporary, very structured. But I mean, of course, I, I can see that you're a dancer and that there's a, a meaning to it, but it connected to my own sense of dancing as a way of living. Like you don't have to be on a stage to, to dance, but like my sensation is that life itself is the stage, not only for dancers, but for humanity to dance. So that that's my 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 take on 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 the images and movement from from your sense film. So Uh, now I want to know what's on the other side. What? How was your like your your inspiration and your intention to to create this project? Mm -hmm. uh, so in general, I really uh, like to work with my senses, and I'm also kind of actually training them. Like, uh, and um, yeah, I, I try like somehow like to feel also the space around me. Um, and I see like a great um, liberation actually um, by moving from feeling where I am, uh, which space I'm surrounded with. Um, I have like, I think, uh, maybe a natural um, talent for feeling the space around me. I can feel if, um, or like that's then my projection, but I can feel if the space has some light energy or if it's heavy or it's like um uh more uh like wild so like for example like when i'm traveling in different countries i used to travel a lot i always felt in the country i am which how the energy is in the air how I perceive it um, also like when I was performing, which spaces I was performing. So that was one thing, like uh, feeling very clear the sense around me if I'm open up to this kind of awareness. Yes. But then on the other side, I also was like kind of like um, having like an awareness inside myself, which I can use from different um, uh kinds of reality or like perspective so i can of course i can move muscular i can move um like in a in a context of dance movement but there's also like like an inside flow and being which somehow brings like its own quality uh which i personally enjoy very much and uh, there are spaces where it's for me much more easier like to go into this kind of state of movement and some other spaces i have to admit i also i i i just um go on into more like a mindset whatever so wow so that that's basically something like um coming like from 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 this uh, also from the theater space um that's something i'm aware of like that sometimes i also have to function in a certain kind of context and i don't like it <laughs> i feel like that um i want to liberate more like being in the moment and uh, having this natural flow. So in a way, like uh, doing the film also in certain kinds of setting, being outside, we also had like one space where we just put like a lot of like theater smoke 
which also had a certain kind of atmosphere. Um, so there I also was in the sensing field and um, getting like an impact from where to move. Getting an impact from where to move. Yeah, yeah. like through just through the setting. So that's that's why I was setting. Instead of like having like a choreography or like a functional uh, performing settings, I, I I just enjoyed doing the movie and being outside in nature and being more free. It's actually based on improvisation. Yeah, based on improvisation. See, I I feel that this is very important because we are not very aware of the space usually like at, at least for myself <laughs> i i am often so self-centered that i believe that the way that i am feeling it's because of me for better or for worse i am the one to blame for my state and the truth is that we we are individuals because of this skin but but we are part of a whole we are in the world and it's very important to become aware of of the space we are because that permeates our way of being in the world because the space influences you and you influence and, and change the space so it's not only like like a personal state and i feel that this is very important for for pleasure that that and for the sensitive experience of of what's going on because yeah the space molds your experience and i think uh, yeah. i think that it's specific about your relation encounter to your space and i think uh, there are different ways how you can perceive this you can perceive this through like um very intellectual way that you describe what is around or you do just go like in the certain kind of like a uh, really feeling uh and smelling and and and, and it's not the prim primary like i see what i see it's also just like um a deeper connection of your own within your environment and i think uh sorry that i was interrupting but okay. i for example I, um, for me there are just like different realities how you can perceive yourself uh around the setting and um the intellectual way i think is creating the most separation yes uh, and uh if you like just try to feel your relation, how you touch something, and really like also listening what information you get, like when you touch uh, like a piece of wood or if you touch like whatever, like something called iron. So um, and, and immediately in the moment where you touch this other object being whatever it is, there is a relation just very short. And how much can you actually really receive this information uh, and not just um taking it or putting yourself on it so like this is a whole world it's a, yeah. which i found quite big and and interesting and important I and this know, whole like, world that happens like you uh, know like i uh, like sometimes it's very hard like also like to come into this um different awareness like you know because it's so easy for us to come from the rational mind and to see the beauty yeah. of the green and to be inspired by the green and by the beauty, but it's like projection and basically seeing something instead of being in relation. Yeah, seeing some, something and believing it's solid, that it's like an object over there, while the reality is that you and the object and the atmosphere and the room, like you also make one thing with the space you are part we are part of, of the space and and the world so you mentioned something previously about uh being sometimes in places that you are not so comfortable and but nevertheless you you make it function and that you use rationality so that's also interesting for me because like well as a professional or a grown-up like 
I don't know, you are on the family dinner with your aunts asking you uncomfortable questions and like the atmosphere is in a certain way. So my question is how to deal in, in an intimate but safe way to the space when it's not so comfortable? Because if we rationalize, then we, we create this division. But say you you come to dance to, to a theater and the floor is in very bad conditions and it's cold and like the space is not optimal. So how, how yeah, how, how can you relate <laughs> to, to a space that it's not optimal? But I know this one very well. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess because you have the experience. And I think this is very useful for the sensualists here that some of them are accountants or teachers or housewives. Like, because it happens also in life. And it's important, I feel, to to realize that, okay, this is a, a proper space to, to give into exploration, sensations, creations, pleasure. And this is not, this other one, it's not the best space, but I don't want to isolate. I don't want to, to block. I don't want to rush, rationalize, but I want to, I don't want to lose presence. And, and it's, I feel it's very important to, to keep this awareness of the space so you can also be an active agent for transforming this space on a positive way. So yeah, tell us about your experience. Yeah, yeah. So uh, like, yeah, um, well, idealistically, <laughs> uh, uh, most, uh, if I can manage these kind of situations, I'm actually really like balancing myself. So, um, or I try if I feel like, um, like there's a lot of fra fraction uh, in the space. I'm actually really like just to stand on my feet and like let really like, I, I do like a physical, physical um, practice uh, affirmation, like letting the weight drop, like, like really trying like actually to sense the floor. It's something I really valued uh, and I'm so happy that I got introduced into understanding what it means to stand on, on to stand on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and, yeah. Especially, I am like uh, as a as a um, as a character. I'm actually more a nervous, like hyper type. So my feet were always very light on the floor. Um, so I really can see great value just like by letting my weight drop into the floor, listening like how the soul again, like how is my relationship between my soul of my feet and the floor I'm standing, and there I'm like also getting like very easily. Um, information how the situation is about myself uh and of course if i like have an energy rise it's very hard like of of, of letting the weight drop but uh, that i would probably uh like start if i'm aware of doing that i also have to say like i i remember performing situations where like everybody from the outside world just keeps me so busy of like uh, don't forget like where the cables are don't forget like you know like this is and you just had like i just had last years last year like an experience like, like that where just like in half an hour I just like had like to adapt to the performance space and to so many different things um that i had to function and uh, I, I can function like on a certain kind of level, but it's not giving me the joy actually why I'm doing this, why I'm performing. Um, so, but I can keep the outside face in Anfang. Okay, um, functioning. Uh, you... Yeah, but, uh, but but in general, like like uh, I'm the whole time like want to come to the other place, and sometimes it's just challenging, and sometimes it works that I'm having my quiet moment and I can stand and go into into my body and that's basically from where i also can balance like if there is a space where is a lot of friction in the space and i am balanced in myself i'm quite free like you know i actually i am uh i i have space for for uh, the limitation of uh anger or like or or stress 
what is the other person or what is like just occurring in the room. Uh, but it all comes to the place that I have to start myself and I have to know myself very well. And I know that I can't, um, I can't press myself. That's also a very weird thing. I always have to find the spot that I am actually find to a place of freedom and acceptance besides mm -hmm. being rounded. And if I'm getting very long, lucky, I have to say sometimes uh, um, I feel like that also uh, like some certain kinds of energy is in me enough that this is operating. So yes. uh, because uh, and then it's it's also not um, I can trust that energy that this energy will run through me and I will just come from there basically not myself surprised where I'm ending up or but this these are like uh, I also have to admit lately just happening when I'm like improvising improvising free and uh, like improvising again yes and, and free around so. I like what you say of about being free, meaning having space for the unresolved and conflicting things from the space. Like there, yeah, can, yeah. There, that there can be problems and etc. But still it's like, like having a wide inner territory to be able to, to sustain that contradictions without them canceling the the experience the the whole experience so yeah i mean that's also the tricky thing because i just talked before about relation and being part so so there i'm, I'm just like i i have i have to say that so like if, for example if you go in relations you also can of course get in relation like into this um uncomfortable uh emotions or stress yes. or like danger <laughs> So, like, uh, I, I think there's a certain, like, a certain level of where you can be aware of these things. So you are like not separate, but it's not like um, uh, going into your skin. Like, yes. they're, they're like, there's, there's a different, you know, being like uh, feeling the other person, what is happening, and still not be, being attached uh, or like I. I it's it's a different also between um emotion like emotionally attached and uh being still like in relation that does not have to go necessarily together yes yes to, to react this is about relating with reality as it is moment by moment and in a way not not trying to force it to be different and not and especially not shutting ourselves down and not isolating because then there's no more relation and no no more possibility for for change for change of the space and inner change so just to to summarize like if if i go to i don't know to the supermarket and i don't like the atmosphere and it's very tense something that i can do is to to drop my weight and to connect with the with the sensation of the weight in the ground like like grounding and then i have like a like a clear reference of my relation from me to the space being grounded and this also applies if we are dancing at the paris opera or convent garden in new york or i don't know and yeah and now i want to ask you the other way around like the previous question is i am okay but the space where where i'm in is not suitable for uh, for anything like I, I am not feeling like very flowing into expression so grounding is one solution so what happens on the other way around like you're in a beautiful place you're finally on vacations but you're dragging an inner situation from I don't know trauma or a, or you just fight had a fight with your best friend or you had a a conflict with a relative or or simply like you didn't got the 
deposit on the bank account or it was frozen and you don't have the money to, to pay the hotel and you're already in the Bahamas or something happens like de that re derails your inner, inner state. So what can you do to, to connect with your back to your senses and welcome the beautiful space around you and dance with with the energy in that interaction? Yeah, I, I found this question um, very interesting. Uh, and of course, I just can like um, talk about my personal experience. Uh, I have no clue what is right or wrong in this world. So I'm, I'm just, but uh, yeah, like uh, for example, like I sometimes I, I wonder like, you know, you're like in a war situation and the springtime everywhere is a blossom so it's like an extreme contradiction between uh, your personal um, grief fear and the beauty outside um, or just like more personal also um, you get like bad news um, I, I, I myself I always found interesting like sometimes because my body um, always reacted very extreme like as I, like maybe I said like I was hyperactive and um, probably uh, over sensitive yeah exactly so I always had to deal with this inside like nervousness or like like um, not not um, holding myself like sitting still in school or, uh, or stretching <laughs> um and I, I'm trying, like, actually to explore what is happening in my body. And sometimes I found it very interesting. I don't know if this is also then the right way uh, coming to an end, but sometimes I found it interesting to explore it. And of course, I can um, uh, try my tools, like, of relaxing or just seeing that this is kind of like emotion which is hanging over me and uh, mm -hmm. seeing as. Uh, like seeing it as a third body like for example like that this is stressing me that this is right now stress hanging over me or that this is like sadness like hanging over me and um yeah i, I i'm kind of trying to witness it and um of course um sometimes i i'm stuck in it and um I don't want to move it, but sometimes I'm also trying just like to create other images or doing like, again, like body work moving actually also sometimes helps quite a lot. Um, like I would say, like uh, sometimes for sadness, I really like to move uh, and free my body to get it out of my body. But if there's heaviness, um, Yeah, I, I, I just uh, think, ah, there it is again, like, you know, it's there, observing it, and um, know it is a phase. And, um, yeah, I try with affirmation to, to let it pass. It's, it's, it's a thing, um, I think, especially these days, um, there was so much going on the last three, four years uh, we are dealing with. And, um, there's always a part of me which I found interesting and another part was just also hitting myself and I'm trying like to find my ways through it. Um, I, I kept also like, for example, I kept like a certain kind of training which I established every day like uh, to to, to um, nurture my other senses to being more in the space so it's like what does what does give me nourishment and what does not give me nourishment um i'm also trying to watch this i'm trying to watch habits sometimes like um, it's a discovery like i think we are like all on this path like somehow yes. uh, trying like you know like not to get uh, caught up by this uh, massive of information that we are dealing with a catastrophe and it's quite yeah. a lot with yes so i'm a little bit humbled about you know i like i have i don't have an answer on my <laughs> yes. but this is your experience is gold because 
you are like your work is about this this aware this sense awareness and we don't normally get that taught in elementary school <laughs> so i like a lot how you're sharing with us uh your your research and i i find it very helpful this view of of imagining heavy sensations and and heavy states as stuff that is hanging on you like i have this sad sadness hanging on me or this anger or this resentment and and the way of dealing with this did is not getting caught like these are hanging in you but that doesn't mean that that you get to become that sadness it's something that is hanging on you and that is wise to let it pass so it's not that you're throwing it away or that you're blocking it and don't, don't want to see it but like accepting and understanding that this is just a part of what's going on and going through this this processing of inner states through you said curiosity because when we yeah. when we get curious we make we make this space this inner space for things for things to move and yes we have been globally for so much like i i am living here in the mountains because of the pandemic and this whole project of the essential sessions podcast it's i think the positive that came out for me in my life out of the pandemic because i made that radical career shift i was uh teaching uh pilates teachers to become teachers and now like i am doing something completely different online and i feel now that i recap that curio curiosity saved me like like giving space for things to unfold for for the things that were hanging in me to get like digested and and fade out and allow for new things To emerge and that is something very beautiful that i saw in in your film sense that from from one movement you go to another movement and to another state and it's now after talking with you it's very clear how different you move when you are in the forest walking on autumn autumn leaves in the floor and when you are inside the the walls of a huge german building so it's it's very nice like to see this this authentic way of inhabiting the present and i feel that this is very key for for what the essential sessions podcast is, is about that is that is pleasure because pleasure can only happen in the present same as pain suffering is another thing it's like what we carry but but like it's very important to to be here now and you're giving us the very very important key of the being here that is being here by being aware of the space around you and by being aware of your inner state so my next question to to wrap this beautiful conversation is about then then the other then the, the other person so you already are aware of the space you are aware of your inner space and you're in a dance and and like maybe in a communion with the environment So what to do when you have another person in in the mix can be for example Michael your dance partner or can be the audience in the theater that is looking at you or can be your your beloved 
and you're on the intimacy of your bedroom. So oftentimes when I am witness dancing or when, when I am, for example, if something happens in me, when I am aware that this video is going to be watched by a lot of people. So when I am starting to get even like a little bit nervous, anxious and shy. So, so that's another energy that comes in. And the question is how, how to perform the, in a way that is not fake, like how to deal with that, this shyness and how to deal with, with trying to pretend to be more than what I am or trying to not show what I don't want people to see and just like how do you just keep on being present and open and dancing with the other and even dancing for the glance of the other uh like yeah like one thing i i just wanted also to add uh, before just uh, because uh i mean there's a difference between if you go to a space and you know you go to a space to discover and to um it's a little bit like um when you were a child like you know you don't know like what you discover like but you are like part and you are just uh, going on an adventure so that's a little bit the same or it's actually the same um there's something something in you and i think in every every person when you come to to this play of um oh you discover something oh what is this doing like you follow like uh, an unwritten line how you discover and um, are in relation like like children do when they are playing that you know so i think that's that's um something every 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 human being has inside like a this kind of relation um so and um so when you perform um you come in with uh, a job like it's a job is the wrong word i don't know right now the right word but you come in with um people who are coming there to see you and you have like you have to deliver yeah. and uh, there's an expectation and um so especially if you prepared like a whole show um so there you kind of like try like also to own the space basically to own the space and to be able to be in the space and also actually like um uh, to know how the audience is, how the audience feels. I have to say also, it's, um, I have uh, different stories in my performance history from where I come, from what I did in the end. Uh, like I, I, I was performing like theater pieces, like uh, we were on tour, like 200 performances in three months or whatever. So there you really deliver and you know how to make the jokes, to set the jokes that the audience is laughing or like, um, you kind of, of learn like how to um, uh, create an atmosphere. So uh, later on, like in the dance world, you also kind of like go into inside feeling. So you get to ta totally introverted. <laughs> so you're like more bu like busy with your body and you don't care about the audience at all. Like maybe because uh, so like, so there are like all these different kind of um uh, patterns where I went through in, in performing and uh, creating a space and then of course there's like um, uh, the way of how you create an atmosphere through emotion uh, like being strong and expressive and or being hypersensitive like you like you know there are like all these different ways how you actually basically can create a space it's a, I think performance uh, performing has also a lot to do of um, how you can um, set an atmosphere uh, and there are different ways how you can set an atmosphere um, so if you're dealing with a person uh, or you're dancing with a person I have to say sometimes I personally also enjoy just to feel like um, the space around the person uh, for some people they don't know this kind of um, movement they're um, just like um, trained as dancers and they're 
technical, very good and precise, but actually uh, maybe intellectual. I don't know how how um, how to say it, but uh, like everybody has like a different expression, like how they move. And I sometimes I just like to be around them to feel the person. Like you know, sometimes I like to invite them into into something else, and maybe they're coming into my world, and maybe it never happens. Um, uh, but that's my personal um, thing I like sometimes. I just like to feel the space basically between um, between two people. Yes. And it's all around just the space between how, how strong, how intense it is, like how you like create like coming closer and, and, and wider. And, uh, so it's a lot about just the air. Um, yes. Yes. I, 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 I really do enjoy this kind. And because then I also... I can feel the person next, uh, how, how the person is moving next to me. I don't have to look. I kind of like I'm in the same energy field. So uh, in a way, that, like, so then this whole information, like, again, about the energy field a person has around somebody, it's quite interesting. I mean, there are always so many different um, layers, What, how the energy field person um is um, radiating like from where it comes like a person who's like working very straight from the bones has a total different like um, different uh, energy field around instead of somebody who has like um, who comes more from from a physical or like from from emotional or like yeah no you know like there are so many different uh, different types of energy fields and it's um, up to the person how aware how aware uh, again like basically how aware you are about your own tools and the other person is um, so yeah and sometimes like I yeah I, I sometimes I see who I have in front of me you know like what would be the best like with Misael for example I thought um, he is the best if he feels free so uh, so that he feels comfortable so I was just, so that I come to his beauty basically like that he feels like he shares he gives um, so I, I basically was I, I, I was trying um, like also sometimes irritating the space um, so that he has like uh, come to an instinctive awareness um, but uh, also mostly was that, that he feels very comfortable and shows his, because he's a, just an amazing, beautiful dancer, I, like I um, value him very much. Yeah, but it's like for, um, it's always like, uh, like still the, the big question, like when are you producing or like, you know, like when do you say, okay, now I do performance, okay, how can I be beautiful? Ah, I do this kind of movement, ah, so now I do my zigzag and whatever, like, you know, or if you come like uh, to the space of freedom where you just like yes yes um, yes the space of freedom the space of freedom yeah that, yeah yeah because then you you give the space for the other to breathe and you you give yourself the space to also breathe and be if you take the other into account because then you're actually dancing with the other and letting the other dance with you. So it's, it's a relation. It's not just me and my technique and my self-awareness or me being a, a great whatever businesswoman or lawyer. And I come into the space in the board meeting and it's me just saying my thing, which is very different than coming into the space and becoming you part of the space and and moving with the other people in the space. And I believe that even for a negotiation, I don't know, in a trial with the judge and the lawyer and whatever, the outcome it's gonna be different. When when you relate in this space of awareness and and freedom. And even more in intimacy. So I, I like this already three wonderful layers of awareness that 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 I have just learned and discovered with you like 
the, the awareness of the space, the awareness of your inner state and the, the awareness of the other. And using this awareness to, to move, to create through curiosity and, and sustain this possibility through freedom, being freedom and, and allow freedom for, for the situations to unfold. So would you share with us a little practice or exercise, a little taste, so we can all move a little bit and get a sense of, of what you're doing in that beautiful film called Sense? Um, yes, uh, I, I was thinking what uh, would be suitable. Um, yeah, I guess like just like simply standing on your foot and um, letting the weight drop, uh, which starts by that you visualize that you are a skeleton. I also can stand. <laughs> Certainly, I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> mm. So if I'm standing on the floor, I'm kind of like I'm, I'm feeling where the sole of my feet touching the floor. I'm trying like to feel the bones in my feet. I, I'm, I'm visualizing every little toe. Tiny one, how to name all the toes, five toes of the foot. You visualize them and you feel like how the flesh basically around them is falling into the floor. Flesh is constantly dropping and the bone structure is rising upwards. And again, you feel like, how is your relation? How is the whole uh, soul of your feet in relation to the floor? What do you sense? What do you feel? How are your anchors? And you travel up the body to the ankle. The bones upwards to the knee. The sides. It. And again, I found always very interesting how this whole part actually is set up over your feet. How does the weight fall? Bruises, hips, legs, knees, feet into the floor. Does it fall straight through? You go higher through the hip bones up to the spine, the sacrum. Your tailbone, how how is this in this body, the skeleton to your upper body, skin, chest, shoulder blades. How is this space? How is this room? How is the skeleton there? And how is the weight falling through? How the whole weight dropping through the body, through the hips, into the legs, knees, into the feet. How much can you release and let the flesh fall and the skeleton rising up? And you go to the shoulders and to the arms, elbows, wrists. Some fingers, fingertips. You visualize the skeleton of your hands and 
flesh dropping down, hanging down. How is the relation between your fingertips actually and your foot or your feet? Can you relax your hands and see how it's adapting to your feet? You let it drop and again you go to the horizon skeleton up to your neck, to your head, to the back side of your head, to the front side of your head. Side. Sometimes also really like to imagine actually um, be like um, that the head is uh, like a skull, I think it's called skull, so it has no eyes, so even like the space where your eyes are, it's empty, the, uh, the eyes are dropping, dropping into these holes. <laughs> yes. Um, so you release this also your uh, teeth, like where your mouth and the whole, uh, the whole. You just have in your mind being a skeleton where everything is just dripping into the floor. Uh, how everything is getting like just passed through you, through your feet into the floor, basically. That's the interesting part that you see. The whole weight goes through through this part. Uh, yes. The soul of the feet. Yes. And if you are there in a certain kind of state, you also just can feel the space around you. So if you are inside your body and you let it drop, you feel how you go from inside to the outside and how the outside is touching you. So that you feel if there's wind in the room, that the wind is touching you. So if there's something behind you, or like some warmth, you feel something behind you. And again, like how do you perceive the earth? Is the earth warm? Do you feel it cold underneath you? Is it stiff? Is it um, soft? Yeah, so that's what you take. Oops. We, we, we have a... Am I too early? <laughs> yes, a little too early. We, oh, okay. We had a, a, a spontaneous visitor. It's yes, what we say about <laughs> the, the atmosphere <laughs> and the curiosity. <laughs> and we start dancing. Play your drums. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I could sense presence. I remember Martha Graham. I, that is like the lineage where I come from in dance. That she said, "Present your gaze." Like when you are on stage, present your gaze. Mm -hmm. She went on further saying, give the neck. So this is about vulnerability, but not in a weak vulnerability, but but in a sincere way of, of being in the moment, in the space, also being as a space, like letting the space contain you. I like this very much. <laughs> and and also you you arrive to the best part the the final outcome rob so karen tell us how can we know more about what you're doing creatively i don't know if you also give workshops oh i uh, right now i would not know what to say <laughs> <laughs> Um, because um, also like I, I sometimes I just like really come like to come from the side that I get an inspiration. So when I have the inspiration, I I, I start like uh, making this inspiration happen. <laughs> um, I yeah. So basically, I, of course, I have a website where things will be uh, listed. 
Okay. Social media. What's the name of your website? It's uh, www. Uh, Karen with e um, slash slash e s s e r slash project dot com. Dot com. Okay, and uh, can we watch your your new film Sense? There as well, or or is it somewhere uh, else? Maybe no, only in cinemas. We're right now we're applying for film festivals, so we hope that the film festival. So I can send a private link. Yeah, yeah. Please share it with us. I think the sensualists that are watching and listening to us now will really enjoy to see what I saw, and even more with all these wonderful background that you share with us on becoming more aware in our sense of the space, our inner space and the other. Thank you so much, Karen. This has been an honor and a pleasure. Hope to meet you somewhere sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Hope to meet you soon as well. And essentialists, remember to take the time to sense your fire so you can share your flame. And if you're not subscribed already to the Essential Sessions podcast, please go to centrodepoder.com and get yourself signed up to get these episodes delivered on your inbox weekly. See you next time.